Thank you very much indeed for coming. It's a, a great privilege for me to chair this, uh, <coughs> this session being presented by Dr. Parashram Patil on the Indian cashew economy, complexities and uh, directions. Uh, for most of you who are faculty here, I guess you don't really need an introduction to Dr. Patil. He's one of the most active persons on this, uh, in, on this campus. And <coughs> um, it's a particular source of pleasure for me because as far as I know, he's the only other economist who's a uh, faculty member here at, uh, along with me. So without much ado, actually, I'm going to ask you, Dr. Patel, actually, I mean, we all know that he's an agricultural and a natural resource economist and who's been doing some very important policy-oriented work. Um, and he's published a lot, and you can see that he's, uh, he's already been sort of releasing books after books. So it's a r real privilege. Uh, Dr. Patil, the floor is yours, sir. If you, if you would like to speak for what, about 35? 30 minutes, yes, sir. Oh, very good. OK, so then we'll have a discussion. Over to you. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, honorable chair of this session, Dr. Santosh, sir. My mentor, Dr. Naneshwar Mule, sir, former secretary to the Minister of External Affairs and the chairman of National Monetary Commission. All the senior fellows, fellows, junior fellows, my dear friends and ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for coming. Today I'm presenting one of my work, a piece of my work where I work in these last two years on the Indian agriculture export competitiveness. I am presenting one of the part of the entire work. And why cashew nut? Because nowadays this industry is in news both at the central level and at, at the state level. And I'm presenting not just as an agriculture economics today, or just a fellow or just an expert. I myself with the cash net farmers. I see in this industry growing from the last 50 years. So my entire childhood, it, I, even up to the age of my 35, I spent in this entire both the processing level as well as the cultivation level. In fact, sir is also coming from that region. So this is very close to us, and the government of India is doing a lot of things, both the state level as well as the international level. And this industry is now cause of concern for at least 10 lakh farmers into the entire India. That's why I wanted to present this, this, this research, this, this piece into this, this, this uh, platform where I can reach to, it will reach to the throughout the nation. So, Indian cashew economy, its complexities, and what is future directions? What is the status now? What are the challenges this industry is facing? And what is the future direction? Because this industry has a very glorious future, a glorious history. World's first cashew factory started in India. Whatever today world has in the cash net industry in the globally, that everything is gifted by India only. Everything, right from cultivation to processing to the export, everything is done by India only. So that's why this, this industry is very important. Until last decade, India was the global leader in the cultivation, in the processing, in the export. But nowadays, that status has been gone down. In the last 10 years, India is no more the global leader. It has been reached up to third or fourth fourth position. So that has created a very drastic impact on the backward supply chain, on backward actors like farmers, like processors, and so many things. That's why we, really, we have to see how this industry is in so what situation today now and what is the future of this. It's not going up. It's not working. Ah, OK. Okay. So I'm starting with, as I said, that India is the global leader. India was the global leader. Still, India is the second or third largest exporter, largest producer, or largest processor. So almost 0.7 million hectares of land of India under the cultivation of cashew nut. We almost produce 0.8 million tons, million tons of raw material every year. 
And if you see this, the presence of this industry is almost an 18 state. It starts with the coastal line of Gujarat and ended with the, even, even up to the, it is there into the north states. Maharashtra is the number one state in the cashew production, along with the Kerala, Tamil Nadu, all the coastal line. And if you see this entire region where the cashew is growing, that is the almost hilly region, where there are very less other employment opportunities available, where the cashew grows. So these people get the employment opportunity from this, this, this cashew nut. That's why this industry is very high, very high significance at the rural economy or at the rural, rural where wherever there is a very highly region area and where is there is no other employment opportunities like the coastal region of the India, even in the northeast. That's why this industry has a very, very big importance. Right now, when we when the cashew expo started in 1960, India was the India's share into the global cashew export was 99%. Now it has come down to the 15%. And last year, or this academic, this this fiscal current year, India's export has been reduced down by 21%. This is a very serious concern. Second thing, the United Nations already declared this industry is in the poverty reduction tools, poverty eradication tools, and it has been included or it is close to the one of the sustainable goal is the poverty reduction. If you see, there are 48 major cashew producing country in the world. Out of that 48, 18 cashew, 18 countries under the least developed countries. And India is already facing or fighting the poverty reduction, so this industry has a very strong significance in this all the context. So I'm just, so what methodological approach I have done or I have included while doing this entire research, basically this is analytical research, both the primary and secondary data have been conducted and while Making the analysis, I have choose certain parameters. For example, domestic cashew production versus import or uh, import or uh, import import or the raw metal processing. Then productivity analysis. Then export of cashew kernels versus import of raw cashew nut. Then what is the real comparative advantage of cashew export? What is the national protection coefficient of cashew export? What is the tariff and non-tariff measures? Value added products. Government. What are the different government programs? These all kind of parameters I have. I have taken into consideration while making the detailed analysis of this cashew industry. And finally, I have come up with the certain, certain strategies which we can implement to improve the performance of this industry so that it will continue to contribute sustainably into the poor strata of the society. Even if you see the, the 10 lakh people are directly involved into this industry, whatever, whoever working in this industry as a worker, out of that, 95% are the ladies, are the women, where they don't have any other employment opportunities. So that's why this industry is playing a very significant role at the rural India. So I am giving a projection here, what is the domestic cashew production, what's the important If you see in this table, from last 10 years, what is the India's domestic cashew production? If you see in 10-11, it was 6.53 lakh ten. Then X6, then if you go to the import of raw material, it was 5.29 metric lakh metric ton, it was 10 11. If you come down to the last 2011, if you see that India's domestic production was 7.73 lakh ton, but the import it was it is 9.55 million. So import is constantly growing. Even India is the global leader, or India is the second largest cashew producing country in the world. In spite of that, India's import is growing, or it means double than what is what we are producing now. So this is a very cause of concern. What are the reasons for that? Import of raw net is increasing rate due to the domestic production, because we don't have sufficient domestic production, though we are the second largest cashew producing country in the world. Growth rate of consumption in the domestic market is increasing trend. So earlier, the cashew was, you know, what was called the poor man's crop and rich man's food. But over the period of time, with the, with the rises in income of the middle class, the demand for the cashews also increased. So indigenous demand is also increasing in the domestic market. That's why the processing has been happened. So Indian domestic processing industry is not sufficient, not getting sufficient raw material, so they are importing. Imported raw net are quite low as compared to the Indian produce. And whatever the raw material we are getting from the outside, it is very cheap compared to the domestic raw material. That is one of the reasons that the import is rising. 
And what are the strategies, what, what strategies we are suggesting even to the government of India or the state government that the adoption of high, high density fall planting with high yielding varieties to enhance the domestic productions and reduce import, massive area expansion and replanting, farmers to be encouraged at national level to take up cashew farming as a primary crop. If you go to the, any corner of India in the 17, 18 state, everywhere you find that the cashew is taken as a secondary crop, not the primary crop. Very few areas in India where you find that the cashew has giving the primary importance or primary crop. 95%, even when we conduct the survey in the Maharashtra, Western Maharashtra, 95% farmers are taking this as a secondary crop. So due attention is not given to this crop, so the productivity level will go down. I will show you to the next slide. So this is why, why I want to show this one, that one of the reasons that India's trade competitiveness or one of the reasons that India is not doing well in the last 10 years in the export market because we are heavily dependent on the raw material which is imported from the outside. Though we are the largest importer, uh, largest producer of this cash flow. This is a productivity. So the last, last five years, if you see, India's productivity of the cash flow is declining over the period of time. So this is the one of the reasons that... Unit of land. Yes, yes. Yes, per unit of land. So this is the reason, one of the reason that ki India is not producing sufficient raw material which uh, domestic industry is required. And that has directly impact on our export competitiveness, our, our export price competitiveness. So if you see the worldwide, on the other side, almost last decade, India was the leading global cashew economy. India was the first producer, India was the largest producer, number one producer. Still, India is the second largest producer. You, but if you see the productivity rank of the whole world, India stands at 23 number. When India is the largest, second produ largest producer in the world, but the productivity at 23rd. So even if we just improve our productivity level, whatever the raw material be required in, in to cater the demand of domestic processing, it will be done. But, and sec one, what is the other aspect of it that world's best agroclimatic conditions available in India to produce cashew nut. Even though we are at 23rd, so it, it shows that we are not giving the sufficient due attention in terms of whatever good agriculture practices require for cashew nut. This is the reason that it shows that ki still this is the secondary crop in India as far as the cultivation is concerned. Now the export of cashew kernel and import of raw nut. If you see the last year's data, export has been drastically gone down. If you see 2010 and 11, the India's export of 2,819 crores. If you see the last 2022, just reached down so slowly, 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 it's getting reduced down. But at the second hand, if you see the import of RCN or import of raw material is not been reduced down. It has increased, increased, so it has also made the negative impact on the trade balance of the cashew nut businesses. So this is a very serious concern that we are, we are exporting, but at the same time, whatever we effort we are doing to export those things, but through our import of raw material, we are losing that advantage. So this is the one of the reason that India is now, recent days India is now doing well into the world cashew economy in terms of export. What's the full form of RCN? It's a raw cashew nut, sir. Right. It's a raw cashew nut. It has two parts. One is the raw cashew nut, which is the outer shell, if you see, and what we are eating is called a cashew kernel. So, India is the global leader in producing of cashew nut earlier, raw cashew nut. But India's processing capacity is so high, it has increased so high, that domestic raw material is not sufficient. So, sir, we are importing almost worse 90%. What we produce outside India, we import 90%. Mostly come from the African countries. So this is the one of the reason that ki India is not doing well in terms of export. And now see the domestic uh, production, sir. These three chart, one chart is giving that what is the export of cashew kernel in the 2010-11 last years. What is the domestic consumption? What, how much we are consuming every every year? every year into India, and what is our total processing capacity? See, in 2010-11, India's total cashew kernel processing was 2.38 metric ton. Out of that, 1.5 we are exporting, and 1.32 we are consuming domestically. But chart shows that, ki, over the period of time, the export has been reduced down. The domestic consumption has been increased. And 
total processing capacity or output is also increasing. But it shows that, but export is declining. Export is declining, that's why whatever high price we are getting in the international market, that we are not getting. It has a reverse impact on our farmers, farmers what the farmers price is getting. That also I have shown in the next slide, but it shows in that key, domestic market is increasing and the export is declining. But at the same time, our processing capacity is also increasing. See, at the, uh, also we have, so we have identified or calculated reveal comparative advantage. Last year, last four or five years data, you see, India's export has been declined, but India has a very high comparative advantage into the global market. But if you see the last five years, comparative advantage, RC has also been declined. It was in 17, 18, 3.23. 18, 19, 2.81, 1920, 2.77, 2021, 1.87. You see the export also. Export also last four by has been declined. It shows it is a very serious concern that India is losing the trade competitiveness, export competitiveness in the global market. That is the proof for it that will all corresponding with the decline in the export, our RC has been declined. So if it is go on, continue, continue, India will be going to face a very serious problem in terms of cash flow export. What is the import implications on the farmers? As I said that ki India's total processing capacity is 60 lakh metric ton. But out of 60 lakh metric ton, only 8 lakh metric ton produced in India. So remaining 8 ton, 8 metric ton, we are, 8 lakh metric we are importing. So that much of import we are doing from the outside world. So what is its impact on the price? If you see, Whenever the raw material is increased, in 1718, our raw material was 6.49. 1819, 8.35. 99.38, 8.3. But at the same time, you see the impact on the domestic prices. Domestic raw material prices also has been declined over the last period of time. This is very cause of concern because farmers are nowadays not getting a sufficient price what they're supposed to get. That generate unrest into the Rural economy. And why this? Because why this is important? You can see the entire topography of the cashew cultivations. In that entire topography, this is the major source of income the farmers who are residing into that region because they all are based in the hilly region. So when the price is goes down, it creates a lot of financial problems to those farmers. And you can see the when the whenever we increase our import in the last four or five years. In last four years, slowly, slowly, the raw material prices has been also declined. What is the implications? Because th there are two things. We are also importing raw material and we are exporting finished goods. That's cashew kennels. So what is the implication of importing raw material constantly at high level? What is the impact of that onto the final price? That is cashew kennels. We, you can also see that ki with the increase of these four or five years, this is the cashew kennel uh, I think it, it cashew kernel uh, export, which is declining over the four or five years. At the same time, you will see that the price of the final product is also been declining. So that's why export was important. If we lose the export market, it is bound to happen a mark price impact on this price on the final product. And since there is a loss, so there is a pr low price for the cashew kernel finished product, it has its impact on the domestic market on the uh, what the price is farmers are getting so because of your we are losing the export market it is there is a negative impact on the what the farmers is getting and also what the processor is getting and that shows by this chart we also calculated the national protection coefficient of cashew exports it shows that ki npc is more than one so india is losing export competition in cashew nut it, it is the ratio between what is the domestic price of the cashew nut Visa is what is this price of cash in the international market. But we found that the domestic price of the particular commodity is high compared to the international market. So it's very difficult to export. That's why the national production coefficient is more than one. It also shows that ki India is losing the export competitiveness. So it is not good at all. It is a very cause of concern. Now import duties and implications. Now the government of India has taken a lot of initiative to address this issue, what was the first issue? What was the first? Uh, what was the first initiative they have taken? Basic custom duty and import of production has been reduced from five percent to two point five percent. Earlier, what was it? Was a five percent custom duty. So whenever, because if you stop the import, 
our 50%, 50%, 50% cashew processing units will not run at all because our 50% is the gap as far as the processing is concerned. So government of India has reduced down the duty up to 2.5%. But what was the impact of that? Ki our, in, our intention of the government of India or the processor was being that ki they, they're going to get the cheaper raw material because the import duties has been reduced down. But it has its reverse impact. <laughs> When, whenever the government, the moment the government of India has come up with these solutions, the, do, the, the foreign players has increased their domestic prices, uh, domestic price of raw material. So there is no use of this particular uh, initiative. Like domestic price? Yeah. In the yeah. foreign, yeah. foreign, huh? they have increased there because they've seen that they are, the, the import. Huh? They, are selling to so us they have increased because they've seen that the import duty has been reduced down. Then one of the important thing is, is everyone is concerned in this industry is that importer free if the cost insurance the CI value is rupees 680 for the cashew kernels brokers and 720 for the so directly the import of the cashew kernel is banned it's a ban under the ban category but the government of India had put the cap minimum import value for two things one is for the broken it is if, if that CI value is 680, you can import. And if the whole kernels, if CI value is 720, you can import. This is done to just know to come out of that W2B regul regulations. But the, the, it has a different or adverse impact on two things. What the processes are afraid about that, what they are saying that, ki under the, the, suppose this value is 680 for the cashew kernels broken. But the, when the importer import the cashew kernels under 680 category, they, they, they mix with the broken and holes. And they show to the customer authority it is just broken. And they commit, they bring it here, then again sort it into this, this category and sell it into the domestic market. So that cause a very cause of concern because this is no damaging whatever the price even it is giving we are giving here so these imp two important uh, notification or two important uh, policy policy initiative taken by the government of india but it has not seen it is giving the positive impact on this industry impact there are a lot of malpractices based on this this thing then the as we know that key we are not producing sufficient raw material. So government of India has done a lot of initiative to increase the domestic production through the cash development board. Government of India has a two important institutions to regulate this industry. One is the cash development board, which comes under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. We have Ministry of Cash and Development Board, Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Farmers Welfare. They look only for the how to develop the cashew cultivations and how to increase the productions. It is situated into the coaching. Second institution, Government of India is having Cash Ex Promotion Council of India, which also come under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. They look at towards the cashew export. Now, the, with the help of Cash Development Board, Government of India is taking the last five years very strong initiative so that if you see the every year 10 to 2,000 hectare land has been increased in terms of cashew cultivations. But the what industry or what required, what we required that need to be accelerated to cover at least 5,000 hectares per annum in traditional northern areas with high yielding varieties including high density concept to achieve self sufficiency So whatever effort we are doing right now to cater the domestic demand of processor, that is not sufficient. It is going just 10 to 2,000 hectares, but we need at least 50,000 hectares per year. Now coming towards the tariff and non-tariff issue, as far as tariff is concerned, Tariffs are zero in major important countries like USA, you export USA. So tariff is not the issue whenever we are exporting this thing. So tariff just only for Asia, particularly to Japan, we have high tariff. Otherwise, all the developed countries and even in the Asian countries, we have almost nil duty, almost zero duty. So tariff is not concerned, but non-tariff is big concern for this industry. So yeah, here I'm giving non-tariff measures, glance on non-tariff measures by different countries for for last 10 years, ki what was the situation? If you see the European Union in terms of SPS, it was a 40 times they have imposed the SPS issues. TBT is 29 times. So if you see the GCS country, Japan, Singapore, Sri Lanka, you know, these are the major export destination for India. And these countries, Japan has put the maximum non tariff issues on India. That is 158 time. SPS issue and TBT is 9 ton issue. So, non-tariff major is a concern in this industry. Yes. 
SPS major. Yes, sir, the phytosanitary certificate, sir. Even if you categorize the SPS measures, ki what are that particular SPS? Food safety, plant protection. So even that also you can see that Japan is the country where they have put the maximum non tariff issue in terms of that is food safety and plant protection. So this, this is entire data it has been given that how many times they have sent a notification in terms of non tariff measures. Uh, this is the TBT issue. In TBT issue also you will see that the European Union has put a lot of restriction in terms of TBT issue. So conformity to assessment procedure, consumer and environmental protection, consumer protection, food safety. So these are the some of the notification every time they come whenever this export. So non-tariff major is the concern in this industry. Now a most important aspect I would like to bring into the notice that this industry has a tremendous potential of value added product. For example, just cashew butter, it has a 5000 metric ton of cashew, it has potential to produce 5000 ton of, but we are not producing even 1000 ton. We are not, there are lot of value added product like we can produce the cashew butter, we can produce the cashew wine, we can produce the cashew milk, cashew chocolate, cashew apple juice. but. In India, just not even 1 percent we have utilized this value added economy of cashew net. That is the also one of the reason that we are not getting a good price in the domestic market or also since we are putting a lot of pressure on just only on the primary processing, the price is getting dropped when export get drops. So if you see the key the companies are operating in the global cashew butter market are Harmal Food Corporation. Netua Bestie Fish Incorporation, Bell Sand Nutters, Peep and Nuts Limited, East Wine Nut. So none of the none of the Indian brand is present in the Indian market. This all are the foreign brand. They come to India and they are producing the cashew butter on the rest of the things. So this is the concern. Unless we go to the cashew value added items, we are continuously depressing our primary market. So it will have a reverse impact. Now specifically what are the reasons for decline in the export? First is the high cost of multi processing and price competition from Vietnam in cashew kernel trade in international market. So Vietnam is India's major exporter where because of Vietnam India is losing its global monopoly. India was having a monopolistic situation in the cashew, cashew export market. But the raw material is very cheap in Vietnam, labor cost is very cheap in Vietnam and there are lot of subsidies given by the Vietnam government, so their cost of production is giving, getting reduced down. So, but we are, India is not able to you know, compete with the Vietnam and the rest of the countries, so that is why their the input is down. The shifting trade in trade cashew indices are concentrated in the domestic market due to high price realization than the export price. So we are getting a good price, but it is always fluctuating. So domestic market are good, but again, Every time this price is not going to be stand, stabilized. So, for example, in the in the time of the festive season like Diwali and the Ganpati season, we are getting a good price in the domestic market. But the rest of the season, it's always downside. Then the growth rate of consumption domestic market is increasing trend. Lack of aggressive export promotional measures. Our same exporting countries have started mechanism processing and export earlier. This, this, uh, we are getting the raw material from the African countries. Earlier, there was just the production. These countries were not into step into the processing. Now, those countries started themselves with the processing now. So, there, there, the cost of production of finished product is so much down compared to India. That is the one of the reason our export is also declining or our import, it has created impact on even the imported raw material. When you say mechanized processing, yes, sir. you're talking about the processing of the kernel from the shell. Kernel from the shell. That is the processing into it, sir. Then we have suggested some strategies to both the government of India as well as the central government and the government of India is also and state government is also working on this issue. Some of the strategies also have been implemented. So what was the strategy? Massive area expansion and replanting in cashew with high density concept and high yielding varieties. 5,000 hectare new planting and 2,000 hectare regarding per annum news to be achieved. Strong intention of central government to boost the domestic production. Concentrated approach in socially backward areas to safeguard the livelihood of small and marginal farmers with involvement of 
uh, other FUOs, upgradation and mechanization of cashew processing industries, promotion of Indian cashew as a brand. Why India is getting a high price? Because the quality and taste of Indian cashew you will never find ever in the world, anywhere in the world. So that is why there were high demand for Indian cashew, specific demand for Indian cashew with the high prices. But what has happened now? We only produce the 50 percent domestic here, 50 percent we import. But while we are selling, we are mixing those things and selling out. So Indian brand has been destroyed. So we have to promote the Indian brand. Expansion in markets, enhancement of value added product range, board instrument mechanism with the involvement of st uh, stakeholders like opening regional cashew board at the cost. I, I specifically mentioned that Maharashtra is the number one state in cashew producing. But the institution who is governing the cashew production, it is not in Maharashtra, it is in Kerala. So, no one from the state like Maharashtra, Karnataka, Gujarat, they reach to the Cochin. So, the, whatever the efforts are doing by the cash it does not reach to those people. So, that is why we need a different region wise cashew, cashew development boards. So, the Maharashtra government has taken this initiative and the Honorable Mulesa one of the initiative that the government of Maharashtra has started the cashew development board there. So, more emphasis we need, we have to work on how we are going to increase the, at least we should aim that our productivity rank come at least into top 10 countries. We are at 23rd, so we at least come to, we have to come into the top 10 countries so that our productivity will go increase. So that is why we need a different decision development activities. Then the ensuring farmers have access to quality seedlings, technological know-how and market information. Increase in training for farmers and entrepreneurship and farm management including harvest and post effects as because farmers still they consider this is a secondary crop. Supporting public research that helps identify agricultural practices and technologies that work best in local environment and economic conditions. Improving rural infrastructure including secondary roads to the better connected cashew farms and processing sites. Facilitating market entry of through technical skills development and better access to market information. Strengthening capacity among the cashew processors to meet the quality standards and diff producing a different value added product that is the solutions to get the high price. Now this is the, this is the map of G20 countries. India is, India is hosting the presidency of these 20 countries and these are the country G20 countries is the globe biggest market for cashew kernel export. So, India can have a special efforts or India must do a special efforts to increase our cashew export among those countries since India has the global presidency. That is why we necessary we have put this, this map in terms of G20 countries. Now in concluding what I want to conclude here is that ki whatever today we have in the global cashew economy, it is the gift of India. India is the pioneer in the world cashew industry. But the reduction in export competitiveness is the serious cause of concern. The major attributes are low productivity, inadequate raw material productions, imported raw material as well as finished products, labor, increasing labor cost, cost of productions of finished products, excess processing, decline export made, negative impact on both farmer as well as processing industry. Increase in raw material import made negative impact on the farmers' prices. Considering the relevance of cashew sector in rural economy and its export potential, farmers' involvement, suitable agro condition which India is having, women informed because 90% women are the workers in this industry, and the growing domestic demand, the smooth growth of Indian cashew industry is the matter of national interest. And if you see that the United Nations already declared this is the poverty reduction tools and connecting with the sustainable goal of poverty reduction. So India is already fighting with the poverty reduction. This industry has a very strong relevance. It has the both backward or forward linkages. But nowadays, last five, six years, this industry is in trouble because we, our export is declined. And since our export is declined, it has a made a negative impact on the domestic players. So, the smooth growth of Indian cashew industry is in the matter of national interest. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Pardo.